So the first rule about Run Power Club is there are no rules about Run Power Club. In particular, there is no running power standard. And I want you to keep that in mind over the course of this video when I start talking about comparisons, is there is no agreed upon definition of what running power actually is. So while Apple has just started implementing running power in beta on their watches, keep in mind that all the other companies that I'm going to compare it to haven't even agreed upon themselves as to what the definition of running power is. But more on that a little later on. So I've now done three runs with the new Apple running power. And in that, I'm comparing it against Garmin, Coros, Polar, and Stride, which are basically the main players in the sports tech industry that are doing running power today. You may be asking, what is running power? And it's essentially a way to normalize your pace and effort over the course of a run that may have differing terrain. So typically, if you think about a run, when you go up a hill, you're probably gonna slow down. When you go down a hill, you're probably gonna speed up. And on the flats, you're somewhere in the middle. Of course, you can adjust your heart rate to compensate for that. You can run harder going up the hill, and that means your pace might stay the same. And you can run easier going down the hill to again, keep it the same. But in doing so, you don't have an easy way to compare across all those different kind of portions of your race. That's where running power comes in. It basically normalizes across terrain and effort, so you have one kind of thing that you run towards. You can say, I wanna run at 300 watts this entire race, and that'll normalize your effort across everything. That's more useful than using heart rate because heart rate might vary day to day or with weather conditions. For example, out here in the hot sun, my heart rate's gonna be higher than on kind of a cooler winter day. Now at this point, you're probably most interested in the Apple side of it. So that's what I'm gonna focus on for this particular video. Starting off with how you configure your watch, when you go out for a run now, you're gonna see running power is one of your data fields on one of the data pages. But you can customize that data page with two different running power metrics as of right now. The first one is your instant power and the second one is your run average power. There's also another page that's dedicated entirely to running power that shows you a little historical graph that gives you the last trailing 10 minutes. Now, right off the top of the bat, the first thing that I see missing is the ability to see your running power on a lap or split basis on the watch itself. You will see it after the fact in the summary, but as you're running long to see your average running power for that particular split or workout segment would be pretty useful. Keep in mind though, this is all beta. It's released only in beta, only for developers between now and likely September or so. We're to finally release that to the public as part of the next version of watchOS and likely the next Apple Watch as well. Oh, hey, and a quick note, if you're finding this interesting or geeky or something like that, now's a great time to whack that like button. It really does help with this video and the channel quite a bit. So as you're running along, you can see these data pages right here. Uh, again, you can see my instant power there and my average power. Your instant power reacts pretty quickly. So as I slow down, it'll lower and decrease. And as I speed up, it'll increase. Now, of course, running power will vary based on your weight and how fast you're going and all sorts of different things. If you were to maintain your same pace and go up a hill, that'll increase your running power because it takes more effort to go up that hill to increase elevation. And then inversely, if I were to maintain the same pace but go down a hill, it'll go ahead and decrease my power required uh, because even though my pace is the same, the effort to go down the hill is easier. Now, when using these side by side on a bunch of different runs, one of the things I noticed is they all do kind of trend in the same direction correctly, up or down. But it's not until you look at the data after the fact that you get to some of the nuanced details. I'm gonna focus on one workout in particular here, an interval workout, but if you wanna see all of my runs with it, including the original data sets themselves, I put a link down to the page that you see right here, where I go into all these sets in much more detail, including some of the running dynamics portion. So for the main run test here, I've got an eight by 400 meter uh, interval set. I got a warm up first about 10 minutes or so, and I go on some flat ground just to kind of keep things simple for right now. Uh, and then I got 400 meters of hard running and then 90 seconds recovery. I was doing these 400 meters at about a 330 to 345 a kilometer pace or about a 535 to 545 a mile pace. And then for the recovery portions, I was doing those as I walked. Now I didn't hand hold the camera uh, during any intervals here because if I did that, it would impact the accuracy of the sets because of the fact that it's using wrist-based power uh, as opposed to something on a foot pod. Now each of these devices measures power is very similar but also slightly different. In the case of Apple, it's using totally wrist-based, so entirely within the watch itself, which is identical to what Coros and Polar use. Garmin, on the other hand, requires some sort of external accessory. Uh, so that can be the HRM Pro or HRM Try or HRM Run straps or a little pod that goes on the back of your running shorts. In my case, I just use the HRM Pro strap with the Garmin 400 255. And in the case of Stride, it has a foot pod that goes on your running shoe and I pair that up with the Garmin. And then from there, I can see and record the data on the Garmin watch. That also works with many other watch platforms as well, including Apple and Coros and Polar and Sunto. Uh, they're kind of like the Switzerland of the running power world. Now let's get straight into the data. Now what you notice right away is that the Stride and the Apple data are relatively close together uh, in the beginning during the warm up, whereas the Garmin and the Polar data tended to be a bit higher. 
On a run I did later on where I included the chorus data, it was kind of in the middle, but closer to the stride side. Now again, the reason for these core differences is based on the algorithms that each company chooses to implement. And in particular, one of the core reasons that you've seen stride lower, but Garmin and Polar higher, is that stride does not include what's called the elastic recoil effect, or basically the rebound effect when you run. And that kind of goes back to the whole scientific side of it, uh, where scientists today just simply don't agree on what is included in running power. Uh, so there is no way to define and say, hey, stride is right and Garmin is wrong, or vice versa, because there simply is no agreement in the scientific community on how to do this. However, there is agreement on what happens next, which is in that first walking interval, you see Apple's power cuts out entirely. Uh, so basically I finish my heart interval and I go into the recovery, I start walking, and Apple goes to zero watts across the board. And simply put, that's wrong. I'm still exerting effort to walk forward, and thus there is a power being exerted. Versus all of the other watches go ahead and keep maintaining a very low level of power, because again, I'm putting out power in the same way that I'm burning calories walking, just like I would running. However, once I start each interval, all of the systems immediately respond in almost the identical fashion, meaning there is no latency or delay that I saw there. It happens pretty much within one second or so, and they kick up, and they show back the same levels that we would expect. So again, you can see the staggering throughout the entire workout, where the stride and Apple are lower, and the Garmin and Polar higher. Some people have always theorized that Stride chooses that lower power value because it more similarly kind of responds to cycling power, and that's true. If I lose the Stride values, my running power and cycling power are the same. But those are two totally different sort of sports in a sense, uh, in terms of how your muscles work and everything, so that's more of a coincidence than it is anything else. And of course that goes back again to the fact that there is no running power standard. Now back on the little quirk that I saw where Apple basically zeroes out the running power uh, when it's walking, there's also a couple little oddities that I saw around hills, uh, and it seemed like there was some slight delay there going up a hill. I've got to dig into that more and do basically a bunch of hill repeats on a single hill to really kind of nuance that out a little bit, and it's something I'll do probably later in the summer once they refine their algorithm a little bit more. And at the same time, there's also some areas that probably need to be covered as well. Number one is surface conditions. Most all running power units out there today can't deal with varying surface conditions very well. By that I mean right here, if I were to run along this, this is like grass and stuff like that, that is not nearly as smooth and efficient to run on as pavement. In that same vein, if I go out to a beach and try to run on the beach, that is also super inefficient, uh, and thus I will lose a lot of efficiency there. Most running power companies today will try to pretend they can account for that, but at the end of the day, that's mostly just marketing BS, and they simply can't. And you can easily go and demonstrate this running on beach, and then on like mud, and on grass, and then on pavement, and you'll see very little difference, despite the fact that that is a vast difference between beach and pavement uh, in terms of effort. The other area which I haven't really tested is wind. Uh, in the case of Stride and Garmin, they can account for wind in different ways. We don't know at this point if Apple is accounting for wind, and they haven't said in any of the documentation, mostly because there is no documentation. In terms of what you see after the run, on the watch itself, you're just going to see the average power for that particular run, but once you pull it into the Apple Fitness app, you'll see all of your splits, your intervals, your charts. I mean, it's actually pretty good for Apple, which is to say it's not a slam on Apple, but Apple historically hasn't done like this sort of depth of fitness stuff, and so it's kind of cool to see Apple getting into some of these areas with all the different charts and metrics. And it's also worthwhile noting that apps can go ahead and tap into all this running power data that's saved in Apple Health. Uh, so I was lucky enough that the developer of HealthFit, uh, that's an app you can go ahead and use to export out data from Apple Health to any platform like Strava and Training Peaks and all that kind of goodness. He went ahead and he built an early developer beta access to go ahead and export out the running power and uh, running efficiency metrics so I could put together all those graphs that you just saw. So huge thanks to him for doing that and hopefully that'll soon be in the public production build so you can use that to export out your own data as well. Okay, so overall, where does Apple running power stand? Not too bad at all, to be honest. Like, again, it trends very similar to Stry, which does not make it right or wrong. It just, that's that's where it trends. The one big gap, though, is the fact that it does zero out your power while walking. And it's not that you need running power while walking. That doesn't really matter. It's that it impacts all of your averages across your run because it is zero versus being some other walkable value. So if you were normally walking and you were like 50 to 100 watts, uh, now that's zero. And again, that skews things kind of in a weird way. And then on the actual workout side of it, uh, I really like to see again that split or lap average power uh, shown on the watch that make it much easier to pace by uh, some of those intervals, especially some of the longer intervals. But again, this is just beta, so I'm sure it's something that'll change over the next couple months. With that, hope you found this interesting and useful. If so, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. Have a good one.